John Cole with OKRod.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, I'm gonna share with you guys my thoughts on anti-aging foods and the raw foods diet. And you know, here's the thing guys, I'll be the first to tell you guys that this is my 28th year living a raw vegan style diet. I started back in 1995. And what I'm gonna tell you guys is that there's a lot of influencers online now that have, may have been teaching or eating raw foods for one, two, or three, or maybe even five years. They haven't really been doing it that long, and they haven't been around the block to see the more importantly, long-term effects that an improper raw food diet can have on people. So I think it is quite sad that some people basically, I mean, not trying to necessarily do it purposely, but maybe unknowingly spread misinformation because they don't have the understanding or experience or a long-term experience, you know, seeing how eating different styles of raw foods can affect one person or another. No, I will say that I have had my own experiences eating a raw foods diet as well as seeing many people succeed and also fail on raw foods diets. I will say that there are many ways to eat successfully a raw foods diet. It depends specifically on you. These days, I'm not even 100% exclusively raw. Link down below for my video on why I started including some heat processed foods, small amounts into my diet to what I believe enhance my raw food based diet. But here is where I draw the line, guys. Like when I see like just blatant misinformation and YouTubers or TikTokers or Instagram people putting out misinformation in my personal opinion. You know, my goal is to provide you guys the best information that will improve your health. Now, I don't always get it right either. I'll be the first to say that. I'm not perfect and sometimes my poop does smell. <laughs> that being said, my goal is to provide, you know, a lot of evidence-based science on eating a raw vegan diet and how you can incorporate and merge the world of science and raw foods to get the best of both worlds because you know there's not a lot of science on raw foods especially certain camps of raw foods that may emphasize certain classes of you know raw foods such as fruits or even vegetables for that matter i think best is of course to have a balance of fruits and vegetables myself personally my best balance i find is on a vegetable centered diet where I'm eating more vegetables than fruits although I have many and plenty friends that eat more fruits than vegetables link down below for my video on how you can balance out your raw vegan diet style if you want to eat fruits as your dominant you know source of calories or vegetables as your dominant source of calories mostly in the raw foods movement the fruit dominated um, source of calories is uh, taught and it's really uncommon that people teach about the vegetable centered diet and you know to me that that's like that's one of the things I didn't really understand until I've been doing raw foods a lot longer and that actually is the main reason for this episode today so the reason for this video today is because I saw a raw vegan influencer out there um, whose uh, post was shared basically on from other on other different raw vegan you know channels and you know social media outlets and he said something that I I strongly disagree with right maybe the first part I would I could agree with but then the second part he just loses me and now he's just spreading misinformation because I believe this gentleman or this person wants people to think that fruit is God and vegetables are garbage or that fruit is the, is the best food on the planet because we're optimally designed to eat it and all these things. And hey, yes, fruit's great. I'm not going to really diss on fruit. What, what, what I will say is that when he made the claim that fruit is the number one anti-aging food in the world, I could, okay, I'm like, okay, I, I could go with that. That, that, that. that could be legit. But then his second statement is, yeah, things high in sugar like watermelon and dates, and then he says those are anti-aging foods. I have a much harder time like stomaching that and listening to that and knowing that un people that are uneducated about these topics just hear that guy because everybody wants to live in a 
30 second sound clip and and live there and get a 30 second sound clip and then change their life to do this 30 seconds and you know <laughs> life is complex and the longer I've been doing raw foods the more I find there's a lot more nuances than these all or nothing approaches that many newbies into raw foods may preach and you know I want you guys to watch my video down below why raw vegans fail. The number one re reason why raw vegans fail is because if you select the wrong raw vegan teacher or influencer that you're listening to and he's spreading you misinformation or things that aren't going to be true or he's doing it for money purposes or fame purposes, maybe he's a charlatan, he's not even spreading good information, you will fail. And I don't want you guys to fail whatever diet you guys choose to be on. So when he basically said anti-aging food fruits are fruits high in sugar content right I'm like man er, I gotta cancel this guy like I don't I'm not a big fan of the cancel culture but man like this this really puts me off to this guy and it's unfortunate that this guy ha has a huge following and a lot of people that pay him on a monthly you know fee to be in his program to learn his Maybe a lot of misinformation in my view because I don't know exactly what he teaches So I want to show you guys the truth of what is the most anti-aging foods on the planet and you know hint Yes fruits can be anti-aging, but definitely on the list that I have <laughs> Dates and watermelon and fruits high in sugar are nowhere near the top All right, so as I told you guys I'm evidence-based and so I you know pulled out a study and this study is entitled and links down below to my studies that I'm pulling out here Dietary anti-aging polyphenols and potential mechanisms. So yes, it is true that fruits and vegetables and other plant foods are known to be anti-aging foods. And I want to stop right there and let you guys know that, you know, foods can be either anti-aging or pro-aging. And, you know, every food is a bit different. Some may be more anti-aging than others and some are going to age you faster than others. For example, things like fried foods, in my opinion, fried animal foods especially, are going to age you a lot faster than, say, some, you know, red lettuce from my garden that I'm growing, right? So it's all about the choices that you make on a daily basis, right? I want you guys to eat more whole food, plant-based, real foods, eat a lot of the fruits and vegetables raw, maybe include some beans and rice if you need to do that. Some can be sprouted or bloomed and eaten raw. Some do need to be cooked. You know, eat some grains, eat some you know, nuts and seeds, they could be eaten raw and or, you know, sprouted in some cases. I don't recommend roasting them because roasted foods, you know, can create toxins. And in my opinion, uh, be, be pro-aging and, and age you faster because they're causing some oxidative damage in your diet. Anyways, that's the topic of this study. So let's just go ahead and get into the abstract. Okay, it says, for years, the consumption of a diet rich in fruits and vegetables have been considered healthy, increasing longevity and decreasing morbidities. With the assistance of basic research investigating the potential mechanisms, it has become clear that the beneficial effects of plant foods are mainly due to the large amount of bioactive polyphenol polyphenolic compounds contained. Indeed, substantial dietary intervention studies in humans have supported that the supplementation of polyphenols have various health-promoting effects, especially in the elderly population. So what are they saying? Yes, fruits and vegetables are amazing, and the reason why they're amazing are polyphenols. And I've been discussing this on my channel for many, many years. I want you guys to eat a polyphenol-rich diet instead of a polyphenol-rich poor diet. Yes, you can eat a raw food diet, and, and it can be quite poor in polyphenols if you're choosing the wrong raw foods to eat, the wrong fruits and vegetables to eat. And by just making simple changes in the different kinds of fruits and vegetables you eat, you could max out and eat significantly more polyphenols that can have anti-aging benefits. You know, some raw food diets, you know, if you just go on a diet of banana and dates and iceberg lettuce, for example, you know, right? My personal opinion is that, that while well, that has more polyphenols than eating at McDonald's, right? It's, it's considerably lower. That's on like the very low end of a polyphenol-rich diet because... There's not a lot of polyphenols in things like dates and bananas and iceberg lettuce, you know. Instead, I would encourage you guys to eat things like strawberries, blueberries, and red lettuces, you know, that are going to increase your polyphenol consumption, including even things, eating things like blood oranges instead of just traditional oranges. They have a lot higher polyphenol content, even eating things like black olives or capers that I also have talked a lot about 
on my channel are gonna really massively increase your polyphenol content. So let's, let's find out why polyphenols are so good. We'll, we'll continue on here. It says, we highlight the potential anti-aging mechanisms of polyphenols, including antioxidant signaling, preventing cellular senescence, <clears throat> targeting microRNA, influencing NO bioavailability, that's nitric oxide, I have a video on that, link down below if I remember, very important, and promoting mitochondrial function. While the trends on utilizing polyphenols in preventive aging related disorders are getting growing attention, we suggest the exploration of the beneficial effects of the combination of multiple polyphenols or polyphenol rich foods, as this would be more uh, physiologically relevant to daily life. So what they're saying there is that it's a lot more important than just to eat, you know, a diet high in one polyphenol. Like, yeah, John, I eat acai powder every day to get my polyphenols, you know. There's a lot more polyphenols, um, you know, than in acai powder and every different plant food has different kinds of polyphenols. So I'm going to go ahead and jump down to the conclusion of this study here. And it says, <clears throat> It should be noted that one food may contain at least sev several and even hundreds of polyphenols. And some diets, such as Mediterranean diet, have multiple polyphenol-rich foods, which collectively contain 290 different polyphenols. Therefore, it could be misleading to attribute the benefit of consuming particular polyphenol-containing foods to the in individual polyphenol. So that's what I was saying, right? Mediterranean diet, one of the reasons why it's so beneficial is because it is high in polyphenol content from the olive oil to the different herbs to the different plant foods that it contains. <clears throat> and this is what I want for you guys who are living on a raw vegan diet, a vegan diet, or even if you're on an omnivorous diet eating a lot of different things, I want you guys to select foods that are high in polyphenols if you care about your health. Now, if you don't care about your health and you just want to party and eat a ton of fruit and ohm underneath a mango tree and ohm and have the right mango drop in your hand and eat mangoes all day, dude, more power to you. My channel, once again, is here because I almost lost my life when I was younger and I've been on a continual quest and mission to find out the healthiest ways to eat, to ensure longevity, ensure great health. You know, over the years I've been doing this, which, you know, now has been... Uh, this is my 28th year eating a raw, vegan, nutrient-dense diet. So now I know you're thinking, you're thinking, John, what are the foods that are highest in polyphenols? So, you know, once again, I look to scientific published studies for this as well because I'm not making things up out of my ass like some raw food teachers do based on hearsay or what they learn from another raw food teacher that may not have be, or be using any evidence-based science. <laughs> so here's another article. And it actually is just identification of the 100 richest dietary sources of polyphenols. And it's an application of the Phenol Explorer database. So I'll put a link down below to this particular article right down below so you guys could review it and see the data yourself and download this list if it is important to you. Also, I will put a link below down to the Phenol Explorer database. You could go to the Phenol Explorer database and type in bananas and you could see... How many polyphenols are in bananas? I'm not going to say polyphenols are deficient in bananas. I'm not going to say they're super high. The fact of the matter is a polyphenol database shows that in some bananas, you may have like, you know, a score of one polyphenol in the minimum situation, but on the maximum, it could be like 200. But then at the same time, you go to blueberries, you know, it could have like 800 to 1600, you know, polyphenols. So, you know, I know a lot of you guys, maybe on our raw vegan diet, that just, I just got to get my calories. And hey, it's great to focus on your calories. We all need to make sure we get enough calories every day. But as a secondary layer, if health is really important to you, I would say consider the different types of foods you're eating and try to eat more polyphenol rich foods. You know, like, John, blueberries are expensive. I can't afford them. Well, you know, hey, eat, I'll eat, and eat half as many bananas and then include some frozen blueberries or frozen blackberries or frozen other fruits. Frozen fruits can be quite inexpensive compared to fresh ones. You know, check out Costco. I get, you know, organic frozen dark organic cherries as well as dragon fruit. They even have wild blueberries in some Costco's or just standard, um, you know, frozen blueberries, which are all high polyphenol foods that you'd be doing yourself a big pat on the back or a big service to add some and displace some of the bananas and put in some of these high polyphenol foods. Anyways, Let's get to the 100 foods. I'm not going to list them all, but maybe I'll go down for the first page, which is maybe up to about 60 or so. <clears throat> so, 
The number one polyphenol food in the world, according to this chart, is clothes, right? How many of you guys eat clothes? I have good friends that have said, hey, you know, my friend Kailash, he actually was in a couple of videos. I'm like, Kailash, you got, do you eat clothes? He's like, no. I'm like, should I start? I'm like, yeah. So, like, he puts clothes in his smoothies just a little bit. You know, you don't got to use a ton of these things. Clothes would be quite strong. But, you know, he's literally maxing, maxing up his polyphenol consumption because he is eating cloves. The next one is peppermint. How many of you guys use mint? And this is dried peppermint because once again, cloves and peppermint are dried. So when you dry the food and there's less water, that's gonna increase the amount of polyphenols in there. Next is star anise. So these are all herbs and spices that you guys can start using in small amounts in your smoothies. Maybe if you're even still drinking teas, you can make some teas. Next, of course, is cocoa powder. I'm a big fan of cacao pods. You guys could order your own fresh cacao pods. Link down below to that. And instead of cocoa powder, have cacao pods, which have higher polyphenol content than cocoa powder because they're processing that with alkali. They're heating it. They're cooking it. They're fermenting it. And all during the processing of cocoa powder, the polyphenols are lost. But if you guys order the fresh cacao pods and you could eat the fresh cacao fruit with the seeds from my farm in Puerto Rico that I shared with the world many years ago, right? You guys could have one of the highest source of polyphenols. Next, Mexican oregano dried. So I'd encourage you guys also to eat fresh oregano. Next is celery seed. A lot of you guys may be juicing celery, but I want you guys to start including some celery seed. Maybe even just put a few celery seeds in with your dressing when you're blending up your raw dressing. Of course, next, after some of these herbs and spices are fruits. So yes, fruits can be quite anti-aging based on their polyphenol con content, but... Not all fruits are created equal. Another message I've been trying to share on my channel for many years now. And of course, the most polyphenol rich fruit, and so it has more anti-aging uh, potential, is black chokeberries. How many of you guys eat black chokeberries? Probably not too many. I get like a, a supplement with black chokeberry uh, powder in there, and sometimes I'll get it like in a liquid. Uh, next is dark chocolate. Um, you know, that's without any kind of sugar in there. You could get 100% cacao, but then you could just get cacao seeds. I'll have a video on how you can make 100%, you know, dark chocolate, chocolate bars with one ingredient <laughs> coming up soon on my discount juicer channel. Next is flaxseed meal. Yes, flaxseed meal, aside from the omega-3 fatty acids, lignins, and all these things are high in polyphenols. How many of you guys eat flaxseed meal every day, right? Probably not too many fruitarians eat a lot of flaxseed meal. Next is black elderberry. Another amazing fruit. These are kind of more wild fruits. The next is chestnuts. I love eating chestnuts. Mine are actually steamed chestnuts that I buy. And they're high in polyphenols, you know, on 11th. Next is common sage dried, rosemary dried, spearmint dried, common thyme dried. Next is low bush blueberry. Next is black currant. Next is capers. I've been telling you guys about cavers for many years. Link down below for my video on the $1 superfood everybody should buy. Yes, it is capers. Next is black olives. Black olives, another one of my favorite foods to eat. I eat these on a regular basis. Capers and black olives in the Mediterranean diet as well. How many of you guys eat capers or black olives? Probably not too many. I've already researched the best ones to buy that are raw, that are not heat processed. If you guys follow me on Instagram at Growing Your Greens, I have links to my favorite producer of unpasteurized fermented olives that I eat myself. And I have a video below on the capers. Also, I'll put also a link down to the video, to the video I made actually on the olive company when I saw them at the trade show about a year ago now. Next on the list is high bush blueberry, and then hazelnut, and then pecan nut. So I want you to remember those chestnuts if you're, if you're gonna eat some heat processed nuts. And then otherwise, hazelnuts and pecan nuts, focus on those. And walnuts are also higher on the polyphenol list than other nuts, say cashews, that are not even on the top 100. We're just going to go ahead and read down the list. I'm going to try to go rather quick because it's, it's a kind of a long list. Soy flour, plum, green olive, sweet basil, curry powder, sweet cherries, globe artichoke heads. Artichokes are one of my favorite foods. I do eat those heat processed. However, they can be eaten raw. They're not that good raw, and you can also actually juice them. I, I haven't juiced them yet. If you do want to eat them raw and not heat process them, and even if they are heat processed, they still contain high amounts of antioxidants. They're one of the highest antioxidant vegetables that I don't want you guys to discount. Before I started heat processing my own artichoke, 
artichokes whole and eating them, I would buy actually um, glass jarred artichoke hearts that were previously heat processed and just add those to my raw meals. I think that's an excellent thing to do if you guys care about your polyphenol content and more importantly, some of the different fibers contained in the artichoke. Blackberries, roasted soybeans, don't recommend roasted soybeans. Milk chocolate, don't recommend milk chocolate. Strawberries, red chicory, red raspberry, coffee, ginger, whole grain, hard wheat flour, prune, almond, black grape, red onion, green chicory, common thyme, fresh, refined maize flour, soy, tempeh, whole grain rye flour, apple, spinach, shallot, lemon verbena, black tea, red wine, green tea, soy yogurt, yellow onion, soy meat, whole grain, wheat flour, pure apple juice, pure pomegranate juice, extra virgin olive oil, black bean, peach. And that rounds out down to 63. Guess what the heck? Well, let's get to 100 here. Pure blood orange juice. So that's blood oranges. Those are the ones that are like red on the inside. Cumin, per, pure grapefruit juice, white, white bean, bean, Chinese cinnamon, pure blonde orange juice. That's just a standard orange orange juice. Broccoli, red currant, soy tofu, pure lemon juice, whole grain oat flour, apricot, caraway, refined rye flour, asparagus, walnut, potato, Ceylon cinnamon, parsley dried, nectarine, curly endive, marijuana dried, red lettuce. Got tons of red lettuce behind me. Chocolate, beverage with milk, quince, endive, soy milk, pure pomelo juice, rapeseed oil, pear, soybean sprouts, green grape, carrot, vinegar, soy cheese, white wine, and rosé wine. So that's the list of the highest polyphenol rich foods that can confer anti-aging, you know, for you and keep you healthy and young. I mean, this is one of the reasons why I believe the plant-based diet works. Now, this is only one of the mechanisms that science have discovered can be anti-aging. There are plenty others on why fresh fruits and vegetables are anti-aging uh, for you guys, and this is just one of many. So I want you guys to take this into consideration when planning out your your diet and what you will be eating, and even when you go to the grocery store, or you're like me, if you're a gardener or farmer, when you guys choose to grow your food, right? I chose to plant every other every other plant in this bed is red lettuce because it's higher in polyphenols. I believe the red lettuce has maybe like three or four times more polyphenols than the green lettuce. And if you guys are just shopping at the store, buy the red lettuce, boom, instantly. I mean, it might be 10 cents or 20 cents more to buy the red lettuce, but you're going to get three or four times more of the polyphenol content. And yeah, the lettuce pretty much tastes the same as the green lettuce you're used to. It just looks really cool. Plus, I planted trout lettuce, which actually is mostly green with some red kind of speckles in there as well. So, I mean, the goal of this video is to get you guys to realize that, yes, while fruit can be anti-aging and vegetables can be anti-aging, there's plenty of their other plant foods that can also be anti-aging because specifically of their polyphenol content. I want to encourage you guys to eat a polyphenol-rich diet and also to remind you guys a lot of the polyphenols in some of the fruits may be in or on or near the skin or peel. So, for example, the highest level of polyphenols on apples, for example, are the skin of the apples, which sometimes people peel the apple and then eat. <laughs> so I want you guys to eat the apple peel. I actually, I buy concentrated apple peel powder, so I just get to eat the apple peels for their polyphenol content because I am that crazy. And we didn't even get into how polyphenols can benefit your microbiome or the mechanisms, how they work in their body, which there's multiple vehicles and ways that the polyphenols can benefit you. And so, you know, it's very important for me to feed some of my gut buddies in my gut, um, the polyphenols, so that they can reproduce and thrive because, you know, it's a symbiotic relationship between my beneficial probiotics and me. They help me, I'm helping them, and we can be healthier and more anti-aging because of it, you know. What didn't make it on this list are things like dates and watermelons that, you know, they, yes, they contain polyphenols, but they also contain higher amounts of sugar. And while I will say that, you know, extracted white sugar and white sugar products and extracted sugars, even like coconut sugar and agave syrup, which are basically high, high sugar content without any polyphenols or very little, if any, polyphenol content can be quite bad. You know, eating too much fruit, in my personal opinion, can also be bad because you're overeating fruit. And in the definition of overeating fruit, it means you're overeating it and eating it too much. And my new, my definition of it these days is if you're eating 
fruit in excess and because of the excess fruit you're eating you're now neglecting to eat things like vegetables things like capers things like olives things like you know healthy nuts and seeds or even beans and rice and grains and other plant foods because you're overeating fruit I believe you're doing yourself a disservice and that's not going to be as good for your health and it took me many years to come to this realization because I didn't want to believe it and I want to believe fruits for the win and I, I ate high fruit diet for many years and I saw the challenges that it caused with me and I don't want you guys to go through that as well. So do yourselves a favor now and even if you're not going to like cut out all your fruit, yeah, don't do that. Cut your fruit percentage down by 10%. You know, eat a little bit less fruit and eat a lot more vegetables and maybe start including some of the other different vegetables that you may need to heat process or other you know, grains and seeds that you may have to sprout if you want to maintain the raw food label or whether you want to gently heat process them like I do and I share in some uh, other videos. You know, the reason for my videos on this channel is because I want to help you guys out. I want to give back because I've been through the ringer. I've learned a lot through the School of Hard Knocks, through reading scientific published research studies a lot, listening to other plant-based doctors and reading their books that are, are quite qualified on these topics to share with you guys instead of just a random, you know, raw vegan influencer that doesn't have this background that is just doing it for fame and fortune or something like that, in my opinion. So that's pretty much the end of this episode. I really want you guys to focus on eating more polyphenol rich foods because that is probably one of the main ways, and others, others as well, that you're going to get some anti-aging benefits from your raw vegan or other plant-based diet. So if you guys enjoyed this content, want more videos like this, hey, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and share this with other people in the raw foods community on a plant-based diet because they should know about what really makes a food anti-aging because there's lots of videos on about it. And this is a science, guys. I'm not making this stuff up. It is because of the polyphenols and mark my words, in the future, Science will know more about the benefits of polyphenols. And then, you know, if you're not eating a high polyphenol rich diet now, you're going to be kicking yourself in 10 years because we're going to know a lot more about it then. And even if we don't, my money is still on the polyphenols because what else, what other nutrients are in foods aside from polyphenols and other phytonutrients that the plants create can be so beneficial? Like I haven't come up with any. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss my new and upcoming episodes. I'll be coming out about every five to seven days. You're going to know what I'll be sharing, what new knowledge I'll be dropping on you. You know, I have a very unconventional raw vegan YouTube channel because I'm a little bit more divergent and I don't just keep repeating the dogma that has been constantly repeated in the raw vegan movement because I've heard it for the last 28 years now. I always try to give you guys some new nuggets and things to think about and consider so that it can truly build your health and take you guys to the next level. So make sure you click the little bell to so get notified as, as many videos come out. And finally, be sure to check out past episodes. Past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 700 episodes at this time on this channel dedicated to you guys all about how to eat a fruit and vegetable dominated diet more successfully and more healthfully uh, than others on YouTube in my personal opinion. So with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables and high polyphenol foods. They're always the best. <laughs>